Hi, this is Gary. And this is Ned. We are from M8. And today we are here to give you a brief update on the Singapore property market. I believe many of you by now will have come across one or two headlines on the increasing rental rates in Singapore. In the latest figures released by URA and HDB, with private home rents rising 8.6% based on government housing data released on October 28th, and the median monthly rental for HDB has also gone up. The third quarter increase in the private home rent is a sharper increase than the 6.7% rise recorded in the previous quarter, and it's also the steepest quarterly rental increase since the third quarter of 2007. Breaking down the data provided by URA, it pointed out that the rent for landed homes rose the fastest going up by 10.9% in the July to September period, compared with the 3.2% increase in the previous quarter. Excluding executive condominiums, the rates for condominiums in the core central region climbed by 7% in the latest quarter, whereas those in the rest of central region and the outside central region rose by 9.6% and 8.8% respectively. URA rental index of private residential properties reached 137.9, the highest point on record. The index takes reference from rents in the first quarter of 2009 when private residential rent is assigned 100 on the index. As for HDB, rents went higher in the third quarter of this year. For example, the median monthly rate for renting a 5-room HDB flat in Queenstown is now at 3.6k, a $400 increase from the 3.2k recorded in the previous quarter. There are basically three key drivers of high rental and they are predominantly inflation, higher interest rates and low supply of homes for rent. As we all know, Singapore is currently facing inflation and ageing towards the 14-year high. Mm. And as for interest rates, earlier this week, Singapore's three biggest banks, DBS, OCBC and UOB raised their fixed home loan interest rates to between 4.25 and 4.5%. And as for the housing supply, inventory across the island nation is near its lowest level in five years. Given the ongoing trend in the rental market, rents are actually poised to continue growing. However, research has shown that wages have actually outgrown the rental hike in the past 10 years and individuals are actually more financially capable now. Mm -hmm. Some of the charts here will actually show you the data. If you are a landlord right now, you should be very happy, <laughs> right? So if you are not, perhaps it's time to look at your finances and determine if you are able to secure a property of your own soon. Feel free to speak with any of us and we will be happy to do an evaluation for you. So let's go through the market recap, what's going on in the market today. Copen Grand EC at Tengah sold 465 units on launch day on the 23rd October, which is 73% of its 639 units, with all the four bedroom deluxe sizes being snapped up. We can really see the demand and the need for more space from new home buyers as HTV's 30% quota for second time buyers will also fully fill on launch day. And for those of you who miss out, you can make your bookings for the remaining units one month later, or if you haven't heard yet, Tenant at Tampines North is another highly demanded EC. With over 5,000 visitors over one launch weekend, Tenant is another EC project after Copen Grand and North Gaia at Yishun. With the rising interest rates and economical situation ahead, buyers are actually adopting a more prudent mentality, especially after the latest cooling measures. That is where EC comes in as the middle ground. EC also offers a deferred payment scheme that lets you pay the balance of the payment upon TOP, which is great if you are a HDB upgrader. Located in Tampines Mature Estate and less than a 5-minute walk to the upcoming Tampines North MRT, it's no wonder that we see the strong demand for tenant right now. If you are wondering if an EC is the right choice for you, drop us a message and we'll be more than happy to help you with your planning. Yes, and next, the Arden launch at Phoenix Road by Qingtian Realty has been delayed since quarter one of this year. This is due to the approval process for three adjoining remnant state parcels at Phoenix Road, which are still pending the authority's approval. The launch will be then expected to take place sometime next year, one year later than the developers were expecting. For interested buyers, one thing to note is that the developer still has about two years out of the five and a half years mm. to sell 105 units at the Arden. As for pricing, based on the developer's land rate of 630 PSF per plot ratio, which is comparable to the government land sales for the latest EC land prices at Bukit Batok West Avenue 5 and 8 earlier this year, if the developers choose to price it in between the EC average pricing of 1003 and the suburban condo pricing of 1009, this could be one launch to look out for early next year. Mm. In the RCR region, Terra Hill will also be launching soon in the first mm. quarter of next year. Right, so this is something unique as it's a freehold launch in District 5. 
right? So mm. among all the other 99 leagues, so like Whistler Grand, Twin View, and Park Rivera, it has 270 units with just a four minutes walk to mm. Pasir Panjang MRT, right? So it has nine blocks, front facing to Pasir Panjang Port, which will be shifting to Tuas by 2027, mm. right? So this is all part of the Greater Southern Waterfront transformation. This means that you could potentially move into the rare sea view unit by the time Terra Hill has actually TOP. Alright guys, so we've come to the end of the video for December. We hope that we've provided you with some great insights. So do leave us a like or share this with a friend who will find it useful and we'll catch you in the next video.